Today we're looking at turbochargers, and this is Plain Simple. In my turbines video, I went and I spoke a little bit about turbochargers and how the turbine works on a turbocharger just as part of the, of the turbines video. Today I'm going to focus a little more on the turbocharger itself and explain a little bit more back to basics what the turbocharger is and what the operating principles behind it are, how it actually does its function, how it actually works. And we're going to be using this cutout to have a look inside of the turbocharger. To, it makes it a little easier to understand how it works and the airflow and why the shape of it is, what it is, etc. Uh, we'll start simple. Uh, this is a, a fairly big turbocharger. And all turbochargers have basically the same design. They have three sections to them. One is the compressor section, the center section, and the turbine section or the hot section. This is the turbine section. This is the turbine housing, bearing housing or center section. This is the compressor section or compressor, compressor housing. Um, the center section, well, so we'll start here. The center section is the bearing housing. This is the, the bearings that support the center shaft. This shaft that connects the turbine with the impeller, with the compressor blades, then bearings that su support that are housed in here. This is where the lubricating oil comes from the engine and drains back to the engine to keep those bearings lubricated and that's for cooling for the bearings. The oil that comes in is also a cooling fluid for that center section for the bearings. So this locates th that center section locates that shaft via the bearings and it provides the cooling and houses the cooling oil and lubricating oil that flows through there. Um, now let's move on to the hot section which is the turbine section. This here is the turbine wheel. The shape of the housing starts with a certain volume of duct which is here and as you go around it actually reduces in size and it keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller until you, you come full circle by the time you get back over here it's either completely closed off or there's very little space left which is down here So what you're doing is the exhaust gases from the engine, in this case, would be coming from here, going around the, the, the shell, the, the snail shell shape of the exhaust housing, and you're forcing all of the exhaust volume of gases to come around, directing it to the exhaust turbine blades. If you look at this here, the only way that the exhaust has to come through this duct and exit out this center section is through here. So you're forcing the exhaust gases, again coming from the engine, to leave through this narrow passage, going through the blade, making a 90 degree turn and leaving out the center. This is where your exhaust pipe would be connected and directing the gases out away from the car, truck, bus, in this case airplane. That dictates the shape of not only the housing because you're starting with a full volume of flow and as the gases start escaping out through here all the way around you're having less and less volume available. So you keep reducing the size of the housing until you exhaust all your gases by the time you come all the way around. All your gases have already made that 90 degree turn and left through the center. Now if you notice that dictates, that drives the shape of the turbine blades because as the air, let me turn the light on, 
There we go. As the gases are going, leaving in this, spinning in this direction, being forced out of that narrow passage, you want it to catch on the blade here. Spinning it like a turbine wheel does, like a pinwheel. And since the gases are leaving out the center, they're making a 90 degree turn. And they go from pushing on the blade this way, and they start turning. By the time they leave out the center of the housing, look at the shape of the blade. The gases moving in this direction are now also pushing the blade in that direction. So they go from pushing this way, and they sweep around, make a turn, and leave out the center. So that determines the shape of the turbine blades. So as the engine exhaust is swirling its way through the housing and making that right turn, leaving out the center all the way around through the housing, they are spinning the turbine blade. Now this turbine blade is what takes the energy from the engine's exhaust and converts it to mechanical rotational energy. The exhaust gases are pushing this, spinning it on their way out. Now this turbine blade is connected through a shaft through that, that runs from here through the center section to the compressor section which is this shaft here and in turn that moves the compressor blade. Now let's look at the shape of the compressor blade. This here is basically the opposite direction of flow from what's happening on the, on the hot section. In the hot section, air is coming in, exhaust is coming in from the duct, spinning its way around the shell, making a 90 degree turn and leaving out the center, imparting energy onto the turbine wheel. On this side, we have the opposite effect. We have the, the, the um, compressor blades, this impeller, imparting that energy that we just took from there, imparting that energy onto the intake air that's coming in through the center. Now we're not leaving through the center. This air is coming through the center and getting flung out in all directions radially. Air is coming in through the center and it's getting flung out in all directions. In that direction, like that. Like I said, the energy that we took away from the exhaust over there, we're imparting it onto the intake. We're, and that's how we compress the air. We're taking intake air, ambient atmospheric pressure air, and we're adding energy to it, compressing it. The way it gets compressed is this impeller flings that air out, and that's where that, it's the, the compressor housing's job to compress the air. The air gets speeded up and gets sped up by the compressor blades, and if which flings it out in all directions, and the housing turns it and gives it a swirling motion. All around the blade, all around the compressor housing, this nail shell, it starts with very little volume, and as it spins, uh, uh, spins around, you're pumping more and more air into that swirling motion of air. You keep pumping more air so you need more volume so the housing keeps getting bigger and bigger until you get out to the final size. As you come across you keep pumping air from inside here and it flings it out and it swirls it in here adding more and more and more until you come out here and this goes out to the engine. Sometimes it goes through an intercooler to cool it down before to increase its density before going into the engine sometimes it goes straight into the engine but this here is where we put that energy that we took away from there put the energy back into the intake to compress it increase its density now let's look at the shape of a compressor blade we already saw how the flow of the exhaust dictated the shape of the turbine blade, the turbine blade. Now we're going to look at the compressor side. If we look at the shape of these blades, the air that's coming in through here, it's getting, if this is spinning, that air is getting grabbed by these blades here. 
and it changes its direction and it pulls it in. It pulls that air in and changes its direction 90 degrees to fling it out. As it's spinning in this direction, it actually flings it just like you see here. It flings it, flings it out and in that direction, all the way around the housing. You can see how the change of direction, the change in direction of the flow from coming in the center and leaving out this way dictates the shape of these blades. And I know I'm, I'm repeating myself a lot, but I'm trying to drive these concepts home for people that, you know, for the guys that are not that familiar with the design of a turbocharger. It should be, it's not very intuitive at first, but once you see how it works, it makes all the sense in the world. These blades, again, grab the air as it spins, it pulls it in and it flings it out to follow the housing here and if in a swirling motion just like you would create a vortex in an empty soda bottle you fill it with water turn it around to drain it and it go, glo globs and globs and bubbles and whatever until you spin it and then you get a vortex, a vortex going and that's a very uh, efficient way to make a fluid flow that's what we're doing here we're creating that vortex to create a better flow through this housing and out to the engine. And here we have a diagram of exactly this. If you were to slice this turbocharger in half, this is what you would be looking at. This here is a cross section of the compressor housing, and this is a cross section of the turbine housing. And in the middle you have the center section with that shaft that connects one to the other. And the intake side, you have filtered air coming in through the center and getting flung outwards to the out compressor housing. That is exactly what you have here. Filtered air coming in the center, getting flung out to the housing. And going from there, making its way all the way around and going out to the engine. Once we burn it, it heats up, it expands, whatever. Now you come through the exhaust and assuming you're not leaving out through the uh, waste gate, all your gases are coming through the, uh, the hot section, the turbine housing, going around the housing, spinning that turbine blade and leaving out through the exhaust pipe. And in case the question comes up, the way you regulate how much boost this is producing is by regulating how fast this is spinning. This basically becomes an air pump. Depending on how fast you're spinning that pump is what boost your, uh, that pump is producing. And what regulates the speed that you're turning the pump is the waste gate. The waste gate is nothing but a bypass valve that opens up. So basically the exhaust from the engine has two possible paths that it could follow. It could go through the turbine and spin up the, the, that turbine, or we can open up a, a secondary path, which has a butterfly valve or a poppet valve, some type of valve that we can modulate and regulate how much of that exhaust is bypassing the turbine housing. If more air is bypassing the housing, this is not going to spin as much. Therefore, it's not going to produce as much boost. It's not spinning as fast. If we close this off and kill that bypass duct, we're forcing all the air to come through the pump and spin it up, creating more boost. This is the waste, this is called the waste gate because you're wasting that energy out through the exhaust versus picking it up and taking that energy up with the turbocharger. But if you don't need the energy or you don't want to over boost the engine, you don't want to destroy your engine, open the waste gate and bypass all the exhaust straight out to the exhaust, bypassing your turbine housing.
Um, that's fairly simple. Once you understand the principle behind it, uh, it's not a mystery. I hope this video is um, simple enough to follow and understand. Again, if, uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know. And see you next time. Bye.